All right, gentlemen, aloha. We're in the shop today. We have a treat for you. This Ikai T7 FYT based generic Android head unit with UIS 7862 CPU. Is that enough TLAs for you? Three letter acronyms? I hope so, but there is uh, about to be plenty more where that came from. Uh, to start off with, this is going to be just a kind of a teardown tech overview of this thing. If you're hoping for flashy lights and pretty looking screens and buttons and menus and navigating through operating systems, that isn't going to happen. This is just going to be a look at the circuit board, a blurry look at the circuit board, some componentry, and we're going to go over some of the accessory items that I ordered with this thing. I got pretty much all the accessories except a OBD um the obd that they sell with it i've opted to go with a usb obd system we'll talk about that a little bit more um so we'll check out all the accessories check out the wiring harness go over some specifics of how to install this thing um because they don't come with the greatest directions on the interwebs um so that leads me to my next point uh i'm not sponsored by eki ikai I'm not even sure how to pronounce their name. Nobody in their right mind would sponsor me. I have, I think, like 17 subscribers to my channel, so it should be self-evident that this is not a sponsored video in any way. I bought this with my own money, paid full price, all that kind of stuff. So just need to get that out of the way. Second thing I need to get out of the way. Um, as you can see, we're disassembling, or I have already disassembled this unit inside here, poking around in a circuit board, multimeters, wiring all that kind of stuff this you do at your own risk i am in no way responsible my hand makes this official you see that no way responsible uh for your technological malfeasance with this thing if you screw up that's on you but um this is a generic head unit my shoes are making squeaky sounds uh this is a generic FYT based UIS 7862 head, head unit. So what does that mean? There's a company, I, I believe that goes by the name FYT, or maybe these are FYT model number, I'm not sure. They make a bunch of these head units that are rebranded under different names. There's Navifly, there's King Beats, there's TIs, there's this one, Eki, um, there's Momo Mua something or other. <clears throat> there's a bunch of them out there and they're all more or less the same thing for this version there's older px6 based units there's px5 based units there's different cpus but for this 7862 and chips like it um they're all effectively more or less the same thing your the determining factors is you're going to have that 7862 cpu a qled 10.1 inch QLED screen and digital optical outs on the back. So if you have those features, it's very likely you're looking at an FYT based unit. There are other folks that make these things, uh, but that's kind of the most common one. So to that end, this will be a general overlook at these and you will be able to glean probably a lot of useful data, whether you have a Navifly or King Beats or TIs or this one, Eki, Ikai, I'm just going to call them a bunch of different shit. Uh, but there are dip different implementations for all of these. They're slightly different software. The connectors might be moved around to different spots. The wiring harnesses are going to be different depending on your vehicle. I happen to have a, a Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. So your harness and facade implementation may be different on your vehicle so this is just a general look and an overview again going back to this fair warning i'm not responsible if you screw this thing up and make magic smoke and release the the pixies um that's on you this is going to be a general look and hopefully it will help some folks out there and it will be very helpful if you're buying this exact ikai t7 uh unit and you have a 200 series land cruiser you're in the right spot um, but if you're looking for a pretty operating system dive and menus and screens, this isn't the right video for you. So I would suggest you move along, partner. This is going to be a real um, nerdy look at all this stuff. 
And then finally, again, to that end of me not being sponsored by Ikai, uh, they have excellent customer support. I talked to TIs, I talked to Navifly, they didn't sell a unit for my device. TIs was horrible, they do not understand English, and I do not understand what they're saying back to me. It took me like four days to get a simple answer to a simple yes or no question. It was like pulling teeth. It was a big waste of time. At least on their AliExpress customer support was absolutely abysmal. Uh, King Beats read my message, never even got back to me. Some other folks never got back to me. Ikai has not only got back to me, they've been excellent, man. Like they re respond within a day with pictures. Dude even took a video of how to hook up some stuff. Um, like a custom video specifically for me showing me some specifics on this thing. I've been asking them a bunch of questions about how to hook all this stuff up, which we'll, again, we'll go into in a second. Sorry for the long rambling in intro, six minutes into this video. We haven't even got there yet. But anyway, highly recommend Ikai, at least in terms of their customer support. I haven't yet installed this thing to see, like, does it actually work? But uh, I assume that it does. And so far, my experience with them has been great. Okay, let's dive into the specifics of this. I'm just going to look over the circuit board here, hopefully without any glare. This up here is your car radio antenna, obviously. Come on, that glare off of the CPUs. Okay, let me get a little pointer thing here. So, car radio antenna should be obvious. This is the 5G antenna, 5G Wi-Fi that the government uses to monitor your thoughts and control your brain. Um, this is built in. You can't, you see how these ones, this is, I think your 4G and GPS, maybe that's the other way around. You can see how uh, that screws in and you have antennae up here. Um, that's not the case on this one. The government doesn't want you to tamper with that, so they've installed it in here specifically so that they can listen in on your brain waves, right? So um, don't remove that one or there'll be feds knocking at your door. <laughs> uh, you could. You could replace this, right? You could probably put one of these, what are they called, pigtail, whatever thing is on here, just desolder that and pop your own 5G antenna on there, and that would be cool. Then we got the computer, pretty obviously there. Um, there is a heat sink that attaches to the back of this thing for thermal management. When you pop that on there, you got a little heat sink thermal conductive material there. And that leaches power to the back here. And while we're there, I might as well mention for thermal management, you have this cheap Chinesium fan that thereby attaches to the back via the four mounting holes and little threaded screws that I don't believe are included with this kit but um, you can see the thermal um, pad comes to the back there leaches heat dissipates heat from the CPU computer up to this cheap chinesium metal uh, facade and via the process of entropy releases the said heat off into the universe with the help of this I've opted to get a uh, knock to a fan because it will be quieter and move more air it's like 12 decibels or something which is about akin to a person breathing it's very very quiet um and it's twice as deep as this 40 by 10 millimeter fan so i'm going to stick a knock to back there call it a day these two wires uh connect to um this is one of the questions i had with eki 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 E-K-I-Y, whatever, they connect to the black and red wires here, pins one and two on this power connector, which go um, over here to the power connector. So this, if I recall, is ACC ground and positive. Uh, this third wire, we'll get to in a second here, this is your reverse uh, trigger wire. Uh, but anyway, fan, positive, negative, connects those positive and negative check your specific wiring harness those should be black and red and correspond accordingly but um again just be careful how you wire that stuff up all right moving right along connectors up here we'll go over all of that stuff and we got some co componentry on the pcb here that is 
maybe I can't quite read that. Maybe that's a USB controller. I'm not sure. Got a resistor and capacitor land. Let me zoom out a little bit. So overall, it's a really nice looking uh, PCB. Big 6800 microfarad capacitor on the power supply section for filtering. We got this big guy here, which has something to do with the power supply again, switch mode. Uh, I guess this is going to be some kind of regulator or something to do with switch mode supply. I'm not exactly certain on that, uh, but it does have thermal paste applied to it. And it lives inside its little hidey hole right here. You can see the corresponding thermal paste in there. So when this goes over the top like that, um, that lives up inside there. I'm going to put... Uh, better quality good silicone thermal paste on there uh, because there is no mechanical connection on this usually when you have this kind of thing that dissipates a large quantity of heat there'll be screws on the back side to firmly uh, attach it via mechanical connection to the heat sink itself you'll see there are no screws here so there is no mechanical connection so it just relies on whatever that uh, thermal paste material is doing so I'm going to quote unquote upgrade that a little bit with some good high quality thermal paste and in decent amounts um and then we got the power supply header right here this is mainly power some other various io like i said this is the reversing backup wire here some other miscellaneous stuff it will depend on your implementation your vehicle so uh, you know check the pin out of your vehicle 15 amp fuse uh, got a big inductor for high frequency filtering choke. Don't know what that is. And capacitor uh, for the power supply. Um, oh, and this cute little guy here. This is for the digital optical output to this sub PCB assembly. So this is on the back of your heat sink facade cable thingy here. Um, this is one of the big features for me why I, opt, why I opted to go with this head unit. The coaxial and uh, Toslink digital optical fiber optic output. So, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but basically you have on most of these head units, where is it? There we go. We've got an AV harness connector there that plugs into one of these ports that we'll, we'll go into in a sec. And you have these really crappy amplified outputs in white and red and green for the subwoofer if you are all that concerned about sound quality these are going to sound pretty terrible they're just low quality amps low quality um digital to audio conversion again don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole because this video is going to be long already i'm going to have to talk fast to get through it but if you go digital out of this thing, you stay in the digital world with no conversion happening, no pre-amplification, no analog, nothing of any type. Then you can go into a high quality digital unit uh, with high quality signal processing and high quality digital analog conversion out to a high quality amplifier and amplify the signal and get much better uh, sound quality using this. So that's a big reason that I went with this guy. Anyway, back to the lecture at hand. That's what this is for. That goes to that little digital board coming out of the computer. Um, okay, does that do it for that side? I think so. Let's carefully flip this thing over because there, as you will see, there's little ribbon cables on the other side. And you want to be very careful with these ribbon cables because they have a... Uh, bend radius that you want to be respectful of um okay so first thing on this side you know oh there's connectors on the other side we'll go over that in a second i'm just going to finish this pcb stuff up and then we'll go over the more specific wiring so you got an sd card connector here uh there sorry sim card connector this is kind of odd because you also have a sim card connector on this AV wiring harness that comes from the factory. It comes pre-blurred from the factory like this. You have to de-blur it yourself. See, there you go. Um, you got a SIM card connector right here as well. 
and as you pop your SIM card in there, close it, and then slide it one way or the other to lock it in place. There we go. Now it's locked in place. Uh, on this specific impl implementation on this FYT, uh, sorry, this this T7 Eki Ikai unit, um, they're telling me to not use this SIM card slot. Maybe on your implementation it could be different. I don't know, but that that's where the SIM card would be if you're just looking at this thing from the back. That corresponds to that hole. So on the Ekai T7, don't use that. You're probably not going to use that on yours. If you have one of these SIM slots on your AV connector, that's where you're going to pop your SIM card in. Moving right along. Got a little black ribbon cable there. We got resistor and capacitor world. We got CPU with my fingerprints all over it. I will wash those off with the isopropyl before the end of this. We got quality control passed, which I prefer to quality control failed myself. We got, oh, right here. See this little chip, the more astute amongst you might recognize that it says 8 plus 128. Oftentimes these things come with 6 plus 128 or 6 plus 64. That refers to the gigabytes of RAM and the gigabytes of storage. Um, now, this says 8 plus 128, and it also says it right here, 8 plus 128. So you know that it has 8 gigs of real RAM because it says it right there on the sticker, and you can't lie in a sticker. Um, and it also says it on the inside here, which leads me to believe this is actually 8 gigabytes of real RAM. And this also, I believe, is going to be the RAM chip underneath this, because it's right next to the CPU. This common way to do this is put it... The physical proximity close to the CPU, so the front side bus has the lowest latency possible. I'm guessing if we had the technology to take that sticker off of this chip and look at the words that it says under here, which someday we will have the technology to perform such a feat, I'm guessing if we were able to do that, we could see that this chip is probably going to say 8 gigs of RAM. I was uh, looked around the circuit board for four two gigabyte chips or one eight gigabyte chip. I don't see it anywhere over here. I think you have some storage. I think that might be your storage. You got some USB controllers, some other various ICs. Um, obviously CPU. <clears throat> I think that is the RAM. I'm just going to take their word for it um, that this is actually eight gigs of RAM. For those that don't know, it is possible to fake the well yeah actually fake the ram on these things so you'll look at the operating system it'll say that you have eight gigs of ram or six gigs of ram or whatever but there is not actually physically that amount of ram on the pcb it's just faked in the operating system doesn't exist at all it's just a way that some of these cheapo units can skimp out and get away with claiming higher specs that they actually don't have i don't think they're doing that in this case and i actually asked ti straight up or uh Ikai, straight up, like, is does this actually have 8 gigabytes of RAM? Is it real RAM? And they said, yeah, these units, these FIT units are now shipping with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and it looks like that is the case. So I trust them on that. <clears throat> All right, we'll continue walking around this PCB. This is good. Okay, yeah, so let's, what is this here? 128, yep, so that is going to be your, uh, or does that say T28? T28. Okay, well, now I'm not sure what that is, but that's obviously some kind of brain. And it's got a little partner there. And another partner that... Can't quite read what that says, so I'm not sure what that is. Anyway neither here nor there nobody really is going to care about this crap anyway i'm just doing it because i like to do these obscure random videos that might help two people in the history of the world this is going to be the power going to the screen which is a qled 1240 by 1024 i think don't quote me on that 10.1 inch power this is going to be the um digital output data for the screen this uh, one here we'll get to in a second. This is this is kind of important. It's part of the 
kind of the main reason I opened this thing up to begin with. Then we'll go over resistor and capacitor. Oh, we already did that. Let's, all right, just this last little section over here. So this is the power supply. You got ground, um, ground bus off to the right there. That's the power supply header coming in. You can see it's got all the I.O. from the power supply header going off to this thingy with the thermal paste on it that we're going to upgrade. Um, and um, yeah, so that's that's going to be something to do with voltage regulation or, or switch mode something. I'm not absolutely certain. Okay, there we go. So that's the back side of the, that a power supply. We got all these connectors, ribbon cables. We'll go over these connectors here in a bit. Here's the headers for them on the other side. Um, if you do need to test the pins, if you want to use your multimeter and check the pins, it's you got easy access back here with it plugged in. You can you can track these down to where they go on the other side. Okay, uh, this connector right here. This is one of the main reasons I opened this up. You see, it goes over here to this sub PCB. Reason being that I open this up is because there is a microphone up here at the top that you can see right there. You know, I'll show you the other side. Point being, it is always turned on. It's so you got capacitive touch buttons here, volume up and down, back, home, power, and microphone down there at the top. Down at the top. Um so this thing is always on it's always listening i mean not in any kind of nefarious you know 5g government sense but uh well i don't know this is a chinese head unit uh <laughs> i just got demonetized uh monetized. i'm not making any whatever point being i'm trying not to go off on any tangents here and sorry if i'm talking fast i'm just trying to get this video over over with we're already 22 minutes into this thing it's going to be a long video and a lot of boring crap so i'm trying to fit in as much information as i possibly can okay this is always on it's always listening so if you plug in an external microphone which a lot of people do because you're going to generally going to get higher sound quality external mic right here on your av connector same one with the sim card then your external mic will be active and it at least what this unit is going to look like this you can look this up i believe this is a finger lakes mic you can look these up on amazon they're about 10 bucks and get decent reviews and they mount to wherever they go and you can mount this in a place such that it's close to your face hole and it can hear hear you well and it's going to sound good but then you got this thing down here that is also active like i said it's on all the time you can't deactivate this thing so that's going to interfere with the sound quality that you've uh that you've achieved with this external mic and there is no According to TIs and folks on the XDA developer forum, there's no firmware update that can fix this. All right, hold up. Small side tangent on this microphone. I was going to try to do this all in one take, but I do need to insert this in here uh, because it's important. Uh, the sound quality of this internal microphone probably really isn't this that bad. I implied in the video that you need to do this. You need to disconnect this. You're probably fine leaving it connected. 99% of sane people out there probably don't need to mess with this at all. Don't need to mess with this at all. It's going to probably sound decent. Probably won't know the difference. But if you do want the utmost sound quality, you're probably going to be best off disconnecting this thing and using an external, external microphone like that. Okay, back to the video. This is a hardware problem. It's hardwired, so you need to fix it with hard wiring. Fortunately, you got this, this sweet little access panel here that you just... Um, you have to push down really hard right there really just push on that thing man and then and pop it out and then you can get back here and access this so that's pretty sweet so this is a sub pcb for those capacitive touch buttons that we looked at earlier and this microphone um so if you want to disable this microphone so that you can use uh exclusively your external mic which is what i wish to do you can either desolder one of these points here Put a little insulation on the soldered wire so it doesn't short to anything and go on your merry little way and then this will be hardwired disabled uh hardwired disabled another easier way to do that getting back to this ribbon cable is you can take this ribbon cable out by popping these little black you see the little black tabs there 
push them to the left, push that one to the left, and then this ribbon cable will pop out and it will expose something that looks like that. In fact, you could do it on this side too. Come on, focus. See those little silver tabs there on the ribbon cable? They're tiny, tiny, tiny. The pitch on these things is like half a millimeter or something. Um, you could, yeah, so you could do it on this side too. You could pop this black clip out, pull this out, and um, find the corresponding pins. But I did it on this side, and that's probably going to be easier for you too because there, remember, there's this easy access panel right here. So the pins that correspond to nya and nya, these two are nya and nya pins. Let's just call this one and two. This is the top pin right here and the one right below it right here. So all you got to do, take this ribbon cable out, put a little insulating tape over it. Uh, I've chosen to use blue painter's tape just because, because why not? It's less likely to leave residue if I ever want to undo this process. Um, make sure the tape is only covering those two connectors, pop it back in place, push these tabs back into the right, and then I would test use something like a multimeter here and test make sure that indeed the connection from these two holes over here no longer gets to this connector on this side if i recall correctly it's going to be these two on the left so these two guys over here so check, uh, take your multimeter and test that out. And you may want to test the other ones too. The other, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. To the bottom here. Make sure those are still active. Otherwise, your touch uh, capacitive buttons there are not going to work. Okay, we beat that horse to death. What else do we have on the side here? Um, I think that's it. Does that cover it all? Oh yeah, there's another access hatch here. That's not. It doesn't go to anywhere important. It's just boring. It's just a ribbon cable back there. Yeah, okay. I think that's it for this side. We'll go over this PCB in a second here. Let's move on to these connectors. Again, being careful with the ribbon cables. All right. First connector here. This is for your backup camera, which looks like that there's your connector there's your connector so this is backup camera input these wires are I don't remember I'm not using this on my install because I have a 360 degree bird's eye camera and it will use the backup camera system we'll go over that in a second but on your specific install you may or may not use that refer to your specific set of instructions uh, six pin and four pin USB connectors which look like This six pin, four pin, USB. Uh, they are actually both four pin. One is just missing two pins. The six pin is missing two pins, but so I assume these are the same. Maybe this is just made for future expandability or upgradability, USB C or something like that. Not sure. Um, oh, by the way, I should mention the clip on all these connectors. This was a little, th these connectors didn't. Fit like perfectly in place there's a little blocking okay there we go there's some little blockages it's it's not exactly perfect I don't know if you can see that it's a little tab anyway the clip you see this clip right here the factory pre blurred clip that clip that is blurry in the center of the screen is facing down on all of these connectors at least on my implementation. Let me shove it in there, and, and that's that. Uh, all right. Next to that, to the right of that, this is CAN bus. This isn't going to be used on my installation, but it might be used on your installation. Insulation? Insta installation? Insulation, installation. It's my specialization. Uh, this is 360 backup camera. Again, might not be used on your insulation installation, uh, but it is on mine. And the connector is hiding somewhere. This is actually important, so I do want to find this thing. Where is... 
Where is you at, son? Okay, there we go. So this is a 360 cam connector. You can see it's got this beautiful red schmoo all over it. It goes in there, clip down. Um, and here's what's important about that connector. You see there are red wires on these three. The yellow, the red, and the blue connector. There is no red wire on the black connector. That's because two of these connectors, the, let me see if I got this right. Correct. I know that red is not right. Red is left mirror, and this red, red trigger wire goes to your left turn signal um, wire on the other side of this. Okay, so getting a little complicated, getting into the weeds. Again, refer to your specific instruction manual for more instructions. But what I mean by that, where's the other? Oh, the other end of the red wire is in, I've already got it installed over here in my mirror. So let's, let's do the blue wire. So this blue wire is your right mirror turn signal. This wire, the, this is the end that will plug into the camera itself. This wire, you want to wire to your left turns, sorry, right turn signal, blue is right, positive output, positive 12 volt output for your uh, right turn signal. The other end, according to my instructions, is you don't connect this at all. This is just open. Reason being is that this wire is actually connected to one of these pins internally here. And I did check that with the, uh, with the fluke meter to confirm that this red wire does indeed go to one of these pins here. And then it travels down here to what appears to be pin one on this connector that we just looked at with the schmoo. So that wire only connecting on this side and not connecting on this side is able to talk to the computer via this connector onto the PCB. Okay, clear enough. The rest of this, I will leave it up to you to figure out the install. It's, it's um, too, too, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, It'd just be too long. Is that all I have to say about the 360s for now? Let's take a quick look at the 360s. The backup, on my implementation, the front and back ones are square like this, and the side mirror ones are round like like the one that I've lost. Here it is. These are the round ones. And it comes with a handy dandy, where did I put it? I was using it. It's over here on my workbench. The hole saw. High speed steel hole saw. Hole saw. Hole saw. Hole saw. So you don't need Forstner bits. Forstner bits. Staw. Stner. Forstner. All right, so that's pretty cool that they include that. So you can easily drill a hole in your um, your side mirror. So you see, I got this wire run up inside here, side mirror coming out the, zoom out a bit here. Going into the side mirror, going up, up in there. This is the trigger wire that'll run to the, um, the turn signal. Positive coming out here, going over here. Currently living right there, but you take that whole stock and drill a hole wherever you drill it, situate it. Okay, that's that should be that should be obvious or at least uh, whatever. Where were we? Oh, the last connector here. That's going to be what I'm calling the AV connector audio video IO. Um, that's the same one that has the uh, here it is the same one that has the SIM card on it. So. Got the SIM card, which we just looked at. Got audio video, front left, front right, back left, back right, green subwoofer output, microphone input, and some video crap, some video inputs and outputs um, for various thingies. So that's what that is. Um, okay, I think we're good on this. Moving right along. Um, TPMS sensors. This is one of the options that I uh, decided to go with. They look like this. You can loosen this Allen screw and then the end of this thing will flop around. This is the transmitter side. Let me get this lens a little less blurry. Come on. There we go. 
transmitter side, you do th these head units will, as I understand, not work with factory TPMS sensors. You do need to order the aftermarket, the proprietary uh, sensors from one of these guys. Um, so to that end, now let's go over the rest of this. I found this kind of cute. It's got a TPMS warning light on the valve stem cover. That's kind of cute, right? And it looks like an old school Mariners Trident logo. The best team in baseball, Seattle Mariners. What, what? Um, so anyway, you got that. And then this is the receiver for the TPMS. Um, and it is USB. So to that end, I will mention you got your USB connectors right here, right? We went over that. Um, one of your USB connections is going to be taken up by this blurry. Good God. Good golly, Miss Molly. Uh, this blurry TPMS receiver. The other one is probably, at least in my install, going to be taken up by OBD input. So that I've used up both of my USBs. So if I need to update this thing uh, firmware or I want a little USB stick uh, for extra storage for porn uh, music, um, or if I want to have a connection to my DAC, USB, HEC, uh, charging port, any other random stuff. You can't because you used up both your USB connections with your, with, the, with, with the kind. So put a USB hub on one of these or both of them, whatever. It can be passive or active hub. Just be careful with the active hub's voltage back to... Uh, not going to get into that. But just put a passive hub on there to start with. And then you can plug in a whole bunch of USB. Um, so there's that. Okay, now, one other thing about TIs, they're CC3. Remember how I mentioned earlier in this long-ass, God, God, 36 minutes, this long-ass video that TIs is the same FYT USB generic Android head unit. Their CC3 is the same hardware. But I also mentioned that they package them with different software and stuff like that. So TIs, well, indeed, you're going to effectively get the same thing, maybe a few things moved around, but it's effectively the same unit, but they package it with software such that you can't use any generic accessories that you want with it. You have to get TIs proprietary branded stuff. So for example, with the TIs unit, you can't get this just any old generic Android FYT compatible TPMS sensor kit with their unit. You have to buy T TIs uh TPMS sensor kit. You have to buy TI's OBD um, kit. I believe even the backup camera, or uh, sorry, the, um, I don't think the backup, I think the backup camera you can use generic. The 360 cams do have to be, don't quote me on this, but I believe they do have to be uh, proprietary TI's backup cams and the DVR cam. Could be wrong on that, but I, again, I believe that has to be proprietary TI's stuff. So they have their own little ecosystem they want to get you into. Um, I have not found their support to be very good, so I don't know really the benefits of going to that ecosystem. Uh, supposedly, 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 no, I'm going to go supposedly. Supposedly, uh, they're like the apple of these cheapo Chinese head units, right? So they're like an ecosystem where everything just works and it plays together nicely and you don't have to worry about compatibility because everything is branded and it's supposed to work. I, I don't buy it. I found their support to be non-existent or horrible or a giant waste of time. It remains to be seen. I'll do some more videos when I actually get into the install here. But so far, if you're, if you're fine with doing a little nerdy stuff and checking specs and all that kind of stuff, Going with a generic, a really genuinely generic version of this thing, which is closer to stock Android, um, is probably going to be a better option for you because you have more flexibility in aftermarket stuff and accessory items and how it all meshes together and all that kind of stuff. Okay, is that clear enough? Can we move on? Can we move on, YouTube? Let me get a drink of my coffee first. Being here in Seattle, coffee is a necessity. That's just some extra crap that came with it. I've got this uh, backup camera that I won't use. It's got useless little LED lights on here that aren't going to do anything except maybe put glare in this camera. There's a wiring harness. I'll probably use that on another vehicle. Oh, speaking of that, if you have the 360 cam kit, 
you cannot also use a backup camera. And if you think about it, why would you? You're gonna have a backup camera on the back of your vehicle anyway, one of these square ones, and there's a trigger wire um, that goes to, I'll talk about them in a second. Anyway, you've already got a camera in back. So what Ikai, Eki, is telling me is that if you have the 360 cam surround kit installed, you cannot also use a backup camera. Which again, makes sense. You already got one in the back. So, to that end, um, remember how we talked about the trigger wires over here for the left and right turn signal? This yellow one is the for the backup camera. Um, and this black one is for the front camera. There's no trigger wire on this at all. This, uh, that's not the, whatever. There's no, there's no red trigger wire on this black one. It's the front. That's it. It just sits in the front. There's nothing for it to trigger off of. Um, the yellow one, the wiring on this is slightly different. The other end of this yellow cable, um, right here, remember how I said this red wire goes into one of the pins on inside this connector right here? That doesn't happen here. This yellow, this red wire does not go to one of these pins inside the connector here. It's on its own and it only connects to this right here. So if you connect that wire to the trigger for your rear camera, which would be your rear reverse lights, it's only going to go right here. And if this isn't connected to anything, then you got an open circuit and nothing is going to happen. So you connect this to the wire for your reverse lights. Again, verify this on your specific insulation installation verify this on your pacific insulation um but on mine the reverse wire is pin three on this power connector remember this is the acc ground and positive that we hook the fan up to this third brown pin right down near is the red reverse wire or the, is where the red reverse wire uh, connects to. So that is your trigger wire for that. That's how the backup camera works. That backup camera, backup camera that came with it will not be installed. I'll use that on a different vehicle. Okay, moving right along. A little more coffee. Uh, 4G and GPS antennas. Fluke multimeter. Uh, microphone, we already went over that. DVR dash cam um, with fake 3M tape. It says trademark. Maybe it's maybe it's real. If it says, again, stickers don't lie, so it's got to be real. Uh, the thing of note on this camera that I was a little concerned... Come on. Come on. All right, there we go. Um, I was a little concerned that the angle of this lens would be fixed, but you can just push it and it's it's solid It's like you got to push pretty hard, but it does nicely move so you can't adjust the angle You can't go left and right, but you can adjust the angle up and down. So that's awesome It doesn't mention that in the product listing, but uh, that is the case and then you got a little wiring here this plugs into I don't know wherever it plugs into this is another backup camera that I bought with that this is actually a Sony sensor, uh, AHD. Probably a pretty good looking camera. I'll put that over with the other one that I'm not gonna use. Stick it on another vehicle. Okay, we're almost there, I promise. This is 43 minutes, good God. If you're still watching this, you need to reassess your life priorities and time management because this is a stellar, I'm gonna, yeah, this is a stellar waste of time. Um, but again, I love making these videos because it's extremely, extremely obscure. Maybe at some point it will help like one or two people out there and um so i just think this is kind of neat to do because nobody else in their right mind is crazy enough or uh ridiculous enough to go into such a deep dive on such a thing uh and again i'll be doing um i don't know if i mentioned it but a series of videos so once i actually get this inside my vehicle and get it installed we'll do another look at the nice shiny uh backlit qled is QLED backlit, whatever. We'll get a nice look at the screen here and go over all the operating system and look at all that stuff. This is just a, a, a techie dive into this whole thing. Um, okay, uh, before I get onto this, let's go over this wiring harness here. This is the power 
plug the power in right here. This is going to mimic your factory head unit. So all of these uh, male or female or transgender, whatever connectors right here are to mimic the factory land cruiser connections right there. So your factory wiring harness would normally plug in there. Instead, it's going to plug into all this mess right here. If you can't figure that out, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. Just hire somebody to make this installation and uh, call it a day. This is CAN bus box here. This is a magical box that you plug in. You tell your head unit what type of vehicle you have. It talks to that. Everything's happy. You can figure that out in your installation notes. It will be different for your vehicle unless you happen to have a Toyota Land Cruiser, in which case, good for you. Um... If you have a Honda, whatever, you got to go into your OS, tell it what that is. Um, what else? Anything else of interest on this wiring harness? I don't think so. Um, one thing, this does plug into that guy right here. This is for some factory vehicle specific controls. So this plug right here goes to um, obviously this PCB, which has led modules on the other side that illuminate these lights for hvac controls media mode on off this is an actual physical analog uh, button switch on the inside and then you'll see you got this passenger light here um but this is not just a light uh, you can see we got LEDs directly on the PCB, but then you also have this ribbon cable here. This ribbon cable goes back into its little hidey hole there. And that would indicate to me that these are for capacitive touch buttons on the other side of this thing. So these not only have lights on them to light up these buttons when, when they're activated or whatever they're doing, but these should actually be capacitive touch buttons. So you can actually press these things just like we saw over here with the home and the volume up and down and back buttons and all that stuff on here. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing of note here, you see this passenger, this is just specific to Land Cruiser people, but this is a vehicle that this is a, uh, something that will, maybe give you an idea of how your vehicle is going to operate and how this works again this facade looks like that facade for the land cruiser you know it's a little bit different color it's shiny versus matte whatever i put it in the vehicle it looks good um so regarding that passenger light you see it passenger right here and you're probably not going to be able to see in there but it says airbag on and airbag off your stupid little seat belt warning light um, that's what that light is over here. It's on this side. You see up at the top, we have up at the top here. This is the top here. There is nothing. There's just a blank, just a blank panel right there. Just darkness. Darknesses. So you could put whatever you want right there. You could have fun with this. Put some LED lights or a little scrolling screen that says something cool like, the Mariners, Seattle Mariners are the best team in baseball. Whatever you want to put right there, I probably won't go to that that length. Um, but whatever. So that's just something of note. Specific to the Land Cruiser. Are we there? Are we there yet? Oh, one other little minor detail regarding the 360 surround cameras. Do yourself a favor and get yourself this calibration mat. They're like 20 bucks, 25 bucks or something. There's four of them, I think, unless they skimped. Now nah, there's another one hiding in there. Yep, there's four of them. They're a checker pattern, checkered pattern. You put them down on the ground, your cameras look at them, and then it can get a sense of the lay of the land and how the cameras look. You can use this to calibrate your mats. So highly recommend doing that. Otherwise, your 360 cams probably aren't going to look all that hot. And um, that mat doesn't come by default uh with the 360 cam you have to order that separately um this is amps and stuff that i'm putting in there we've got a dsp so the coaxial output that we saw earlier uh the digital output is going to go to this digital device here which will distribute it out to amplifiers which will make this make the speaker sound good dog make that system sound good um I think that's it. 
Are we there? Are we there yet? Let me just do a double check. Scan over this. Went over that. Went over thermal management. The Chinese fan. Wiring harness. Can bus box. We went to way in depth on a 360 TPMS. Yep. I think that's it. Okay. I hope that you have enjoyed this video in all of its 50 minute glory. If you're still watching this, good God, go outside, get some sunshine, go for a walk. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to direct them to Ekai. Oh yeah, I'll leave on this. Dude, this e Eki brand has really, really been awesome. They've been extremely helpful. If you're going with one of these generic FYT units, at least as of this taping, December 2021, early 22, they've got some killer customer support. Like, it's up there with some of the best customer support I've ever had from any company, let alone, a, you wouldn't expect it from a cheap Chinese generic head unit, you know, supplier, rebrander, whatever. They're awesome. And again, I'm in no way sponsored by them. No way. Nobody in their right mind would do that to me. I, I have, I have uh, no subscribers. Uh, so, go with the Ikai or the TIs. I don't care. Whatever. It's all just a bunch of particles. This is all just particles. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters. All right. Merry Christmas. Aloha. I send you love.